Today we are going to be creating a mixed media portrait. We're going to be playful and expressive and just have a fun journey following our impulses. For supplies, I'm going to be using this 12 by 16 uh, Kilimanjaro watercolor paper. It is 300 pound. I like a really heavy paper because I don't like buckling. And the 300 pound paper holds up really well to wet media. And on top of this, I'm going to gel medium with some fluid, fluid matte medium. I'm going to adhere some um, sewing pattern paper to my, to my watercolor paper before I start to add some background marks and to also smooth out the surface a little bit because it's cold pressed and I prefer a smoother surface. For paints, um, I usually like to choose a blue, a yellow, and a red, and I vary the, the shades that I use, um, and then I, I mix my paints from that. And I'm always changing up what types of blues, yellows, and reds I use to see what kind of mixes I can get and what I prefer. Today, I'm going to be using a Cerulean Blue Deep, a Cadmium Yellow Medium, and an Alizarin Crimson Hue, and also a Lamp Black and a Titanium White. And before we start, I will mix up some colors and show you how I do that. I've got a palette knife and a palette here for mixing my paints up. For brushes, I like a variety of sizes. I start out really large and work my way down. Um, and on the abstracted background that we're going to create, um, I like to have different size brushes to make varying marks. Um, so just whatever you've got and just have a, a few sizes available. Um, for making the background and also creating texture on the portrait, I just have a variety of mark making tools. Things like bubble wrap, cardboard, scrapers. I'll probably use a brayer at some point. Um, my favorite tools are a comb and a skewer for scratching and scraping into the paint. A charcoal pencil, a graphic pencil. This is a pastry cutter that I use to make marks. I will likely use some watercolor crayons at some point and Posca paint pens possibly. Um, a water bottle for moving the paint around. If I decide to make it run. Um, I've got a box just full of various stamps and stencils that I've collected or made over the years and I will just grab from these as I feel inspired to do so. So any kind of mark making implements that you like, anything you can use as stencils or stamps or to scrape into the paint or make interesting marks, go ahead and collect that stuff, have that around you, because we're just going to follow our playful impulses as we go through this painting. Oh, also, in addition to, to gluing down this um, tissue paper, the fluid matte medium is something I also use to mix into my paints to make them a little bit more transparent. So I also use that for that. So I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way and adhere my sewing paper to my watercolor paper. So I just put a good amount of of the gel medium quite a bit on here so that it's nice and sopping wet. Then put more on top of the paper. Okay, so now I'm gonna let that dry completely before we start putting paint on top of it. So before we get started, let's go ahead and do some mixing up of paints using our Cerulean Blue Deep, Cad Yellow Medium, uh, Rosary and Crimson Hue, Titanium White, and Lamp Black. And I've got my Fluid Matte Medium here as well to mix into the paints. So when I'm mixing paints up, um, I just like to just begin usually with a neutral. So I'll take all three colors here and I'll start to blend them together. And that's my first step. So I noticed that this is too orange. So I'm gonna bring in more blue. 
to brown that up. And because I'm looking for a dark brown that I can then lighten up into a buff color. So now I'm go I've gone green. So I put too much blue in that. So let me grab a little bit of red. And when you're mixing colors, the opposite, the colors that are opposite of, the, of each other on the color wheel will create a brownish color. Um, so when I had it too green, I grab red because that's the opposite of green. When it was too, I um, can't remember what it was too in the beginning, sorry. <laughs> oh, it was too orange and I added blue because blue and orange are opposite on the color wheel. So here we're, we're getting close. This is kind of a purpley brown. So I'm gonna put a little more yellow in there because yellow is opposite of purple. There we go, now it's much more brownish. It's almost, uh, well, is it kind of a warm, umbery color? So if I take some of this over here, some more fluid matte medium and white, I can go even lighter if I need to. So I want I wanted a few values of that neutral color. So then I can start mixing up other colors that I might like. So I'll take some of the blue and the yellow and try and make a green, a nice green. I'm going to take a touch of the black to darken that green up, gray it up a little bit. So that's a nice green, I like that. And maybe get a nice red going over here. So red with a touch of black, a little bit of white, matte medium. So I really like that purple. That's really nice. Um, I'm going to mix up a blue that's a little different than the cerulean blue. So I'm just going to put a touch of black into that as well and just a little bit of white and maybe a touch of yellow to make it a little more turquoisey. That's really nice blue. So the red I was going for turned more purple and that's probably because there's some blue undertones in that black. Um, so I'm going to try for a different kind of red. So instead of put just a teeny bit of yellow in here, teeny bit of white. And I want, I want a nice red, but I don't want it to be too bright. So the black turned it more purple. So I could put less black in there, or I can try just putting a touch of green in there just to knock it back a little bit, make it a little more dull. So that's pretty nice. And then maybe an orange. A little bit of white. So that's a nice orangish yellow, kind of golden. So I'm gonna try for maybe a kind of a salmon-y color. A tiny bit of the blue, tiny bit of black. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice deep red. Brown, even brownish red. 
So I didn't get my <clears throat> salmon color, but I like that. So this is a nice start. So we're going to take these colors and we're going to go over and we are going to start creating an abstracted background for us to lay our portrait on top of. So I will move us over to the easel. So we are just going to start by picking some colors and just beginning to add color onto our substrate. This is a time to just play and have fun and follow your impulses, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. scratch and mark into the paint. Uh, I want to use my mark making tool to create marks and patterns. When I paint, it's all about layers of color and value and marks, and um, so this is how I start. I just start by creating some un an underpainting. Use my charcoal pencil. writing and scribbling. I like using my comb for marks. I can use my brayer. I can take some of my water slide crayons. And make marks with them. And I can spritz, spritz those with water. Smear them a little bit. I can use a paper towel and see if I can create some marks that way by taking off some of those drips. I can use corrugated cardboard to apply some paint. Can use bubble wrap and do some marks with that. I can scrape with my scraping tool and spread, spread some of it around. Like that. So just anything that you have that you enjoy using for making marks, 
um, got my big, really big brush here. And create some marks with some of the lighter paints. Take my comb through it. some of my really dark colors and create some different marks with a smaller brush. Take some of the blue and do some stamping with the cardboard. Anyway, so just use your mark making tools, your paint colors you mixed up, um, and just have fun and just create a fun abstract background with uh, marks and texture in it. And then we're going to want to let this dry completely before we go in and start to. Um, bring a face out of it. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so the reference photo is a jumping off point. It's a just um, a tool to give you uh, basic shapes, shadows, and to um, give you a starting point. But as we journey along in this painting, I want you to Follow your impulses. I want you to play. I want you to try things. I want you to be bold. I want you to mess stuff up and then put it back in. And we're going to create lots of layers doing that. So if your face diverges from the reference photo, that is great. Um, this is not, we're not trying to stick to this. So, but I wanted to give you something so you had a, had a jumping off point. I'm just going to start with this uh, big brush and some blue paint. And I'm gonna put in some shapes, some shadowy shapes. And I'm standing back and my arm is outstretched and I'm holding the end of my paintbrush and I want to be loose with this. And as I'm going along, I can continue to put texture in with my texture tools.
And I'm going to redo this face. I'm going to create this face and mess this face up and recreate it several times, more than once. Oh, the other thing I want to mention is that I use a lot of fluid matte medium in my paints. Um, so I'm going to have this in a little container sitting down on my table because I can't put it up here. It will just run right off. So I will dip, be dipping my brush in here and then dipping it in the paints so that my paints are a little more transparent. And I want my face to be kind of funky and um, uh, with its own kind of personality and and I want it to be, you know, fun, a fun, really fun face. So I'm going to be, you know, painting really loosely and with very, uh, di you know, different sizes of brushes to create different kinds of marks and effects. Sometimes I'll have my small one here and I'll do something with that and then other times I will um, pull out a big one. is my charcoal pencil. So this first layer of face, I'm going to just play and be distorted and just have fun with it. And as soon as it gets to where it's a little bit too wet, or I feel like I've just kind of, my, my favorite length of time to work on something is about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, if I go longer than that, then I um, begin to, there, a, fa a fatigue happens, and then I start to tighten up. And, um, and I can lose a lot of good stuff that I've, that I've done because I start to just go over everything too much. So looking at this right now, I like this first layer. I like what I've done here. It looks, looks cool to me. So I want to take a break. Um, and let this all dry before I continue and come back with fresh eyes. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I'm back and ready to continue. 
So before I get going on the paint again, you can see that I've mixed up a new palette. I'm still using the same colors, but my mixers are probably a little bit different, but that's okay because I'm using the same three primaries in black and white. Um, whatever I mix up will work together and be cohesive, so that is okay. It doesn't matter. Before I get going, I want to take my Posca paint pens and I want to play a little bit with my pens. And this is all part of the going in and messing things up before refining them again. I'm holding my pen at the end and I'm just squiggling, I'm just letting the lines be squiggly and messy because I want it to stay loose. And I'm going to use pink. And right now, these eyes are looking in different directions, kind of wonky, which to me, that is really fun. And I've, I want to be brave enough to do stuff like that, to have my eyes go wonky or um, so I might run with that. I may change it later, but that's what this is about. Just like trying things out and letting it be fun and crazy and goofy. All right, so I'm gonna start with my big brush and I'm gonna start with some of this. And again, I have my little bucket of uh, fluid medium. I need to make sure my pens are dry first before I just smeared that pen everywhere. Just like before, I'm going to keep placing texture in there. I'm going to be grabbing just any colors that, that I like. I'm not going to worry about what color goes where. Now I will, I am, I guess I should say, I am paying attention to, as I go along, I start out just kind of wildly grabbing colors. And, you know, maybe after years of practice, I just kind of intuitively know what to grab. But um, as I go along, I'll pay attention to the balance of color, making sure that I have a balance of values, um, that I have a balance of warm versus cool colors, um, that if I put a color in, that I've got it in multiple areas, so that has balance. 
So, um, so although it's just kind of an intuitive grabbing of color at the same time, there is some mindfulness to it because, um, uh, because there needs to be balance for the whole thing to work well together. That makes some fun marks. And um, I'm referring back to my reference photo if I just if I want an idea of shadows or any kind of shapes and I want to you know she's my guide but at any point I can just break free from the reference photo and go a completely different direction too and just make up my own my own shadows and what not. This is still just the second layer, so no, no locking anything down, no permanent plan yet. Just still creating um, layers with the colors. Grabbing a water soluble crayon. Then I'm playing with the neckline.
Now I want to put some stencils on there. So I've got this X's stencil and a sponge. And we'll just pick a color here. go. We took a different color and just do, you know, sporadic, sporadic, sparse little bits of stenciling here and there. Mess it up a little bit. take my brayer and just kind of rub it on here on whatever's whatever's wet will kind of smear a little bit Rubbing a paint away can create interesting effects. Okay, so now I want this to dry before I do anything else because it's wet enough now that it'll smear all over. So let's give this a few minutes to dry and I'll be back. 